Have you ever wanted to change the silhouette of an existing pattern? Today, I'm gonna to share a super simple pattern making technique that'll show you how to change the shape of a garment. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm the designer here at Seamwork. You can find us at seamwork.com. We're a community of sewists that are all about designing and sewing our own wardrobe. So be sure to check us out at seamwork.com. I am seriously obsessed with pattern hacking. Rarely do I make a pattern without some kind of modification to the design. And one technique that everyone should have in their pattern hacking bag of tricks is slashing and spreading. Slashing and spreading is a cornerstone of pattern making, and by learning this technique, you're gonna open up a whole new bag of tricks when it comes to pattern hacking. Today, I'm gonna to be making a simple trapeze top but we'll be learning all the basics like what is slashing and spreading, how to choose a pattern, how to slash and spread, plus I'll give you some ideas on how you can take this technique and apply it in a bunch of different ways. So, what is slashing and spreading? Slashing and spreading is a pattern making technique used to add more volume to a garment. You can use it to add pleats, gathers, or even sweep. With this technique, you're gonna strategically slash your paper pattern to create more volume, so you can change the shape of a sleeve, a bodice, or even a dress. I'm gonna show you how to use the slash and spread technique to add more sweep to a garment. Sweep is just a fancy word for the circumference of a hem. We'll be using the Ellie Henley to create a trapeze style top. But before we get started, I wanna give you a little preview of the hack and give you some customization ideas. This is what the Ellie Henley looks like straight out of the envelope. You can see that it's a pretty fitted style Henley tee with a center front placket and fitted long sleeves. And this is what the original pattern piece looks like. You can see how fitted this pattern really is here. And once we're done with our hack today, we're gonna end up with something that looks a little bit like this. You can already start to see how drastically the shape of this pattern has changed. I wanna show you a couple of examples of how you can take this technique and apply it to different patterns. In this example here, I used the same bodice, but started the volume at the waistline instead of at the bust line to create more of a fit and flare style silhouette. You can also use this same technique on pattern pieces like sleeves. I have two examples here. In this first sleeve, I added volume beginning at the elbow and then continuing down towards the sleeve hem to create a bell-shaped sleeve. And in the second example, I created a flutter sleeve. To do this, I just slashed and spread up to the cap of the sleeve to create this silhouette. These are just a few examples of how you can use the slash and spread method, but you can already start to see how versatile it is. While pattern hacking allows you to break the rules, some patterns are just gonna work better than others. If you're new to pattern hacking, you might wanna stick to knit garments just because they tend to be a little bit more forgiving. But if you're more of a wovens type of person, you can do that too. You'll just wanna stick to things that are simpler in design with fewer pattern pieces and less shaping. I'm gonna pop some links below to our favorite hackable patterns, so be sure to check those out. Once you've chosen your pattern, you are ready to get started. We're gonna start by tracing our pattern onto a fresh piece of paper. This is because we wanna maintain the integrity of the original pattern, just in case we wanna sew the original again in the future. When you're tracing, make sure that you transfer all of your essential marks, such as notches, labels, and grain lines. Next, we're gonna determine where we'd like the volume to begin increasing. This is essentially where your garment's gonna start flaring out. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna call this the baseline. And since I'm making a trapeze style top, I want the volume to begin increasing at my bust line. So I'm going to take a clear ruler and a pencil, and I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to the center front right along the bust line. On the Ellie, 
This is gonna be approximate, like about an inch below your placket. Clear rulers are a really essential pattern making tool. In pattern making, we use them to mark parallel and perpendicular lines and to add things like seam and hem allowances. They come in a bunch of different materials and dimensions, but what I really like is a two inch by 18 inch clear ruler. Um, I just find it more useful and it's really great for being able to navigate around curves and measure things like that. Once we've established our baseline, we can start marking our slash lines. You're gonna take your clear ruler and you are gonna start by marking a series of parallel lines parallel to the center front right below the baseline that you just marked. We are gonna start by cutting along our baseline. We're gonna take some paper scissors and we're gonna cut along the baseline, starting at the center front and then moving towards the side seam, stopping just short of the side seam, leaving a small paper hinge. Once we've cut that, we can cut our slash lines. For the slash lines, we're gonna cut from the hem up towards the baseline, again, leaving a small paper hinge. Once you're done cutting, you can really start to see your future pattern take place. While the slash lines allow you to open up the pattern and create volume, the baseline controls precisely where that volume begins. Now that our pattern is all slashed, we're ready to start finalizing it. We're first gonna start by taping things down. So I've placed a piece of pattern paper underneath my slashed pattern, and I'm gonna start by securing the upper portion of the bodice, the unslashed part, to that piece of paper. I'm just gonna use some scotch tape to do that. Once that's taped into place, I can start messing around with the slashed portion of my pattern to play with volume and create the shape that I wanna make. This is where I really like to use pattern weights. I just bought some oversized washers from the hardware store, um, and I use these to kind of help me hold everything in place and visualize the pattern before I tape anything down and finalize it. And this is where you can really start to have fun and start visualizing what your finished garment is gonna look like. If you're trying to create more of a subtle shape, you'll just wanna open up between your slash lines a little bit, but if you want something more dramatic, you can definitely create a whole lot of volume by using this technique. I'm adding between one and two inches between each slash line to create that swingy trapeze kind of shape. Once I'm happy with the shape, I can start taping everything in place. Once you have everything taped in place, you can start to finalize your shape. I'm gonna use my clear ruler again, and I'm gonna redraw the center front, just following that original center front line of the upper bodice. Once I have that, I'm gonna use a curved ruler to redraw my hemline and also to reshape my side seam just a little bit. If you've created a more dramatic sweep, you might have a little bit of a wonky side seam and you'll just wanna soften that curve a little bit. When you are redrawing your hem, you're gonna wanna follow the same line of your original pattern piece. It'll be pretty obvious and the clear ruler will help a lot. You just wanna smooth it out a little bit. Once you're done redrawing those lines, you can go ahead and cut out your completed pattern hack and then go ahead and apply those same changes to the back of your garment as well. After cutting and sewing, this is the garment that I ended up with. I love that with just a little bit of pattern paper, tape, and some scissors that I can create something that I really love. If you liked this pattern hack, be sure to check out a feature we do every month in Seamwork called Pattern Hackers. We share three hacks for that month's featured pattern. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials, techniques, and tips, and follow us on Instagram to stay up to date on all things Seamwork. Have any pattern hack requests? Comment below and tell me what you wanna see. Thanks for joining me and happy hacking.